everybody. So pretty much, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to be doing um, root chakra therapy. Um, I'm doing it myself, and I thought it could help people that are, like, you know, looking up, like, binary beats to, like, like, balance their chakras or reconstruct their chakras or anything like that. Like, you can actually do, like, therapy for it. So, I have, like, a worksheet for it, so I'm going to share it with people just in case, like, it will help you. Um, I'm a light worker, so... I'm like human angelic guidance. Um, I'm an indigo, a star seed. Like I have my own crystal. Like, yeah. So pretty much like what I I'm here for is like to help other people um, share my wisdom. Um, yeah. Like, so like we're in the um, Piscean age, like, transferring into the Aquarius age, if anybody knows what that means. So there's going to be people that are spiritually awakened before other people that are supposed to transfer the energies from the Piscean age into the Aquarius, because, like, technically we're in the Aquarius, but some, like, we're still, like, living in the Piscean age. So there's going to be people like me as light workers that are supposed to bring in the new energies into the spiritual energies at the Aquarius age, like, mm, persistent. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of me because <laughs> this is what I'm here for in my angels and the universe are bringing to me and telling me what I have to do. So we're going to start off. Oh, my channel People are like, oh, hey, like, whatever, like, they call you things. I'm going to call you guys wild things. And you might already know, like, this quote, but this is why. Again, this is my, like, beginning. So, like, I have stuff written down, like, all organized. So, the reason why I'm calling everybody my the wild things. And, like, that's how I'm going to be, like, like, hey, wild things. Like, yeah. <laughs> so... So to me, where the wild things are is a place that exists in our minds. It's a place of liberty, shamelessness. It can take a split second or a lifetime to find it. But once you do, you'll be free. There's a wild thing that exists in all of us. It lives in our passions and the people we love, in our subconscious thoughts or beliefs. It's even made a home in the darkest parts of us. But we can't be scared of it. We have to become it. So, that's what I'm going by for calling everybody. Okay, so let's get started. Sorry, I just had a granola bar. It's, like, stuck in my teeth. All right. Root chakra. So, <clears throat> you are here in order to enable the world to live more amply with greater vision with a spirit of hope and achievement. You are here to enrich the world and you improve it yourself if you forgot the errand. So that is said by Woodrow Wilson. Um, and you can, like, pause this video because, like, you have to actually, like, do a, like, like, write stuff down and, like, do, like, kind of, like, homework, but not really. Like, it's, like, a worksheet type thing. So feel free to pause this, write stuff down if you want to take notes on anything, whatever. So I'm just sharing the wisdom. All right, so I don't know if people know what the root chakra is technically. Um, it's the first. It's the first of the major chakras to be activated and develop. It and its health predicts how we feel about ourselves, the world, and our place in it. We have the capacity to embrace life in all its kaleidoscope glory, cherishing ourselves as amazing spiritual beings here in human form. Which, yeah, we're spiritual beings and living a human experience. We have the capacity to be secure and self-confident even when things are difficult knowing we will survive. So, okay. So what this is going to do, and I'm going to break it up into different videos. So, like, this will be, like, the first thing to do. And then, like, I'll make another video and, like, add on to it. So, tonight, it's flipping, like, 2.30 in the morning right now. And my kid's not home. Oh my god. Yeah, my dog's crazy, by the way. You'll see more of him, and he's obsessed with me. So, um, 
me. He's my spirit dog. <laughs> he pretty much is everything I hate about myself. Well, not hate. I don't hate. Should not have said that. He's everything that, like, my flaws. Especially from when I was a kid. He's a brat. Okay, so. What, um, you can hope to gain from working with your root chakra with the information I'm going to give you. So. An improvement in your general energy and sense of well-being, a greater sense of inner security, and therefore less anxiety and improved sleep. Ugh. Grounding so that rather than just feeling better, you will be better, and therefore more able to deal with the ups and downs of life. Sorry, the dog's in my way. Acknowledgement of your inner beauty and unique worth, giving you more self-esteem and self-confidence. The knowledge that you are a magnificent spiritual being, essential to the total universal plan, and that your contribution, whatever it may be, like I'm a light worker, is worthwhile and unique. And everybody has a purpose. And I'll explain in other videos, like, how I came to this point, like, how, you know, whatever, like, my journey. I'll give tips on um, grounding methods, um, other stuff. That I've learned in my own experiences, and yeah, okay. So, also, the knowledge that you are, oh, I already said that. <laughs> okay, security in your own identity and joy in the success and empowerment of others. The abolition of guilt and shame about what has happened in your life thus far and confidence in the pr prospect of better stability and health. Like, this is really good stuff. And I did this already, so, like, I know, like, the effects that it has. Like, while you're doing it, literally, like, you feel grounded and centered and it calms you down and, and like, everything. Like, I felt, like, a state of calm, like, peace, like, when I was doing it. Okay. I, re I feel it right now just by, like, reading it. <laughs> so... Healing of addictions and unwanted behavioral as well as physical complaints associated with the root chakra, which can also be mental illnesses and, you know, stuff like that. Um, unhealthy thinking, mindsets. Um, it can change your beliefs, have paradigm shifts, like a radical shift in your uh, whole, like, belief system um, just by developing your root chakra and working on it. Um, so now why not look at the following questions and assess for yourself and work for need to be here. All right. So, dog. All right. So this is a self-assessment. This is a self-assessment questionnaire. Like, pretty much, if you answer yes to most of these, then you may as well have a problem with your root chakra. Um, and then we're going to start on things, how to heal it, um, these are things that happen in your upbringing, uh, normally in your early stages, it could be in your later stages too, but, like, you're developing your root chakra, like, from birth to, like, a certain age, like, I think it's, like, six, like, up to six or seven or something, but, like, the things that have happened to you, like, these are the things that, like, prevent you from creating and developing your root chakra, which is, your first chakra, oh my god, your first chakra that, like, needs to be developed in order to have certain things, oh my goodness, certain things, like, you know, within your body, your mind, like, whatever, so let's go through it, so, and if you want to write these down, like, which ones resonate with you, or even all of them, so, self-assessment questionnaire, the first one is, have you ever felt that you do not belong anywhere or that you are lonely wherever you are? So, that's the first one. That can also mean that you're an indigo or, um, light worker, a human, like, a humanitarian, um, indigo is really a star seeds. Like, they feel like that they're homesick, they don't belong here, they don't, like, they're just, like... It's weird. Like, you just feel like you don't fit in. Like, you're homesick. Like, even when you're at home, like, you feel like you're not at home. And you just feel lonely and you don't belong here. Like, it's weird. You'll know what I'm talking about if this is you. All right, second one. Have you ever wanted to escape from your life, either temporarily by drinking, drug taking, gambling, or any other addictive behavior, or permanently by committing suicide. 
that's self-explanatory. I don't really have to go through that. Um, also, I want to add to that because anxiety comes in there. A lot of people have anxiety because when you're not living in the present moment, you are t like, I'm saying this because it says, have you ever wanted to escape from life? So it's like you're trying to escape from the, you, the present moment and you're thinking about your future, what you have to do next. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll say other stuff about that too. But it's like you're escaping the present moment. Like, you can't live in the present moment. Like, you have to try to be in body awareness. Like, and I'll say stuff about that too. <laughs> but if you're trying to escape the, the present moment, like, you, that's a lot where anxiety, like, manifests within you. <coughs> <coughs> so if you're living in the present moment and you're like, oh my God, I have to go do this, I have to do this, like, I have to call this person, like, you're escaping the present moment and you're thinking about the future when... You know what I mean? So what I like to do when, like, I feel I see myself doing that is I like to, like, say to myself, like, whatever I'm doing, like, anything I'm doing, like, oh, I'm walking to the kitchen, I'm picking up the fork to wash it, I'm using the sponge and wiping it down, I'm getting soap, like, literally, like, when you're in your present moment, like, to stay in your present moment if you don't know how to do body awareness or meditating, um, mindful meditating, then just, like, say your activities, like, each step that you're doing, and it will bring you back into your present moment. So, yeah. So the third one is, do you have ambulance about life, regret about being born, and sometimes wish you were dead? Um, yeah, like, you wish that you were never born, like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and that you wish you were sometimes dead, like, for whatever reason, like, even, like, from drugs or depression, like, just wanting to not be around, you know what I mean, um, or feeling like people would be better off if you died, like, if you weren't around in their lives, like, you think you might be a nuisance or something like that, you know what I mean, okay, so, D, number four, do you feel disappointed in sex or impotent or fail to have orgasms? not going to go into that. <laughs> we don't need to. So number five, did you have some trauma, distress, or difficulty physically or emotionally between conception and the age of three to five, including birth trauma? I also am going to be putting out videos for in-home, well, severe um, trauma therapy. Uh, I have a lot of experience with it. I had to I'll make a video and explain all of that, but I am going to put out modules and stuff like that. Um, I know a lot about trauma. Um, I actually have papers on that, too. I just have to find them. <laughs> so, including birth trauma, it can even be, like, when you're in your mother's stomach. Like, if you're, if, oh, crap. If, like, your mom is getting emotionally abused, physically abused, like, she's not stable, like, she's going through shit, like, during her pregnancy, like, that can actually affect you inside of you, inside of her, so birth trauma can, like, also be, um, associated with, uh, conception trauma, um, and the other things, yeah, so see how it says, like, three to five, like, it's kind of like your root chakra is, like, the developing one, like, when you're first born, like, up until a certain age of your upbringing, okay, where am I? Okay, number six. Do you feel insecure and maybe compensate for that feeling, for example, by hoarding, buying things you do not really need or refusing to spend your money? So pretty much like you hold on to things, you buy things for no reason to make yourself feel better. Or if you feel insecure um, and you buy something really expensive just because you want to feel good about you know, the fact that you bought something expensive, but you don't even really need it or any of that. Overspending, hoarding onto things, you know, whatever. Or refusing to spend money. Like, if you don't spend money, then it's kind of like you're blocking from receiving more money. Um, number seven is, is your energy low or unpredictable, leaving you often feeling weak, tired, or sick? Uh, number eight, do you have physical problems in your legs or feet or suffer from hemorrhoids or chronic constipation? Um, number nine, have you suffered from depression? Number ten, have you ever indulged in self-destruction behavior, hurting yourself by cutting, burning, overdosing, etc.? Um, 
you know, even not even necessarily overdosing, but just self-destruction as in doing drugs in general, um, is a coping mechanism, um, anything self-destructive, uh, putting yourself in bad relationships, continuing to let people hurt you, um, you know, having toxic things in your life that affect you, um, okay, Number 11, were you abused emotionally, sexually, or physically, or neglected during the very early years? Again, we're talking about from birth to early years. Um, number 12, were you separated from a parent before the age of four? Again, for example, due to illness, either your own or of one of your parents. So, yeah, death or whatever. Um... Or even if they were an addict and they got up and left and you felt abandoned or felt like it was your fault or you did something wrong, why they aren't around or something like that. Like, that could also be that. Um, that's actually a big thing. Yeah, that's a big thing. Like, that's something that would you would check that off for. Um, were you in an incubator for some time after birth? Kind of also birth trauma, um, do you have problems with self-esteem, self-confidence, or self-worth, and have you ever been abusive to other people emotionally, physically, or sexually, um, that can also be using sex as a mechanism, kind of like, like a weapon, uh, you know what I mean, like using sex as a weapon, um, can be like that, or, purposely hurting people for attention or like if you like somebody and you're kind of like torturing them to try to play hard to get you know what I mean physically abusing people yeah okay hopefully my phone has memory and this does not shut off <laughs> okay so basics of the root chakra all right so the way it looks um, you can look this up too. It has all the chakras up into your root chakra to your crown. So the site is about four inches in diameter. Its physical site is at the perineum, that bit of tissue between anus and scrotum or anus within vagina and in good health that extends down between your legs, swirling down into the earth in a cone of light. So, like, pretty much, like, what I do is, like, when I want to ground myself, like, you're, like, grounding yourself into nature, I picture myself on the earth, um, and I picture myself kind of like a tree, and I put, like, I picture myself, like, in my head, like, my body standing on the earth, like, with roots, like a tree would be going into the earth down to the core. Like, that helps, too. Um, so that kind of, like, is kind of like, it, you know, extends down between your legs, rolling down into the earth in a cone of light. You can also use, think of uh, any kind of light that resonates with you. I usually use white light. Um, white light, like, you know. So the color of it is red. It spins with the same frequency as the ruby gem. Um, I don't really know if that has anything to do with, I think it's July. Is it July? July is like the ruby, um, gemstone. I don't think it does. Whatever. So the activation and development, the root chakra is activated immediately after the moment of incarnation at birth. Its maximal rate of development is during the first few months of life, though focus on the root chakra continues until the age of three to five years. Okay, so I was a little off. Though development of the whole energy system continues throughout life, the root chakra will become our primary focus again between 30 and 34 and again at 60 to 64 and again 90 to 94. Okay. At these times, we will find ourselves focusing on issues associated with security, belonging, where we want to live and with whom and how we really feel about ourselves. See, good stuff. Our lives may change quite dramatically at these times as we are called to re reassess our roots, which is really hard because, like, if you're stuck in a rut or you have these beliefs that you do certain things and it's hard to, like, change them. Like, it's hard to change your beliefs to create your different reality for you, but your beliefs are control, like, your choices and your decisions and 
the actions and the words and the thoughts and the vibrations and the frequencies and the energy that we throw off into the universe creates, creates our reality. So you can't really blame anybody else because you're making the decisions and the choices that you're making that's going to lead to your actions, which leads to your reality. So to do this, it's more than just like doing this, like you have to act on it, like massive action, radical action, radical shifts, you know what I mean? So the glandular association, the root chakra is associated with the adrenal glands, which spring into action when our survival is threatened and which govern the fight or flight response when we are in danger. Pretty much the fight, fight, flight, or f fight, flight, or freeze is our survival mechanism. Um, people with trauma have a more serious fight, flight, or fl freeze response. Uh, for me, subconsciously, I have a fear of the unknown because I was brought up in danger and I never knew what was going to happen next. So I actually have problems of my own, which I will do a video about, where my body is always in fight, flight, or freeze mode because um, it always thinks that it's going to be in danger. Even consciously, like what I'm seeing around me, I'm not, and I can literally handle anything that comes my way. Like, I'm still standing after all the shit that I've been through, but that's besides the point. Obviously, if you're here too, there you go. Um, neurological connection, I don't even know what the hell this says. The cochlea so it's C-O-C-C-Y-G-E-A-L. Plexus, which supplies the anal and genital region. Associated auric body. Uh, it's associated with the first auric layer, the etheric body, which is bluish gray in color and extends to about one inch from the physical body following all its contours, both internally and externally. So I'm assuming that's like your aura. Um... Yeah, I think that's your aura. Um, it's like a bluish gray, like the gray, when it's gray, grayish or like a muddy color, it's not good for your aura. Like, you can do like um, binary things and meditations on like clearing your, cleansing your aura too. There's a lot of that on YouTube. So survival, the root chakra aims to keep us alive no matter what, until we complete what we came here to do. Hence the, associ so, uh, hence the association with the adrenal glands. So again, we're all here for a purpose. It's just finding our purpose and being open to receiving messages and, you know, um, just letting your spiritual realm in and being ready to be awakened and enlightened and find out what your purpose is. Uh, I didn't find my purpose by this, but there's meditations. You can um, do guided meditations to go to your higher self, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, hopefully I have enough time on my phone. We're going to try this. So functions of the root chakra. Those were the basics of the root chakra. Functions of the root chakra. Basic needs and instincts. It governs our basic instincts, eating, drinking, sleeping, sex, self-preservation, shelter, and procreation, and thus deals with our senses of inner security and stability. So, yeah, like, inner security, how you feel about yourself, the stability, if you're stable, um, with all those things, too, like taking care of yourself, the necessities of life, like, eating, drinking, sleeping, sex, you know, shelter, like, those are all necessities that we need. So, grounding. It gives us a firm foundation, enabling us to withstand the impact of life and have a sense of belonging and identity. So, in order to ground, you need to have those things. Like, you need to have a sense of belonging and identity. Like, if you feel like you're floating and not in a good way, kind of like just drifting through life, not knowing what the hell you're doing, it's hard to be grounded. Um... I can give you tips on grounding, too. Um, I'll do that in another video. So, good judgment. 
one of the tips that I can give you that are real quick is if you have wooden floors, not like hardwood that are like laminated and have like that sleek, like shiny like thing on it. But if you have a part in your house, like I have it, like look, my floors are completely like wood and like there's nothing on it. Like my house is like mad old. So if I walk around on it barefoot, it's wood, like it's nature. So it grounds you. So if you go outside and walk on nature, like it grounds you because it's nature, which is abundant, which is infinite, which is, yeah. So, all right, good judgment. It assures us of the gift of good judgment, a tool necessary to avoid danger <clears throat> while still allowing us to be adventurous and take risks. Yeah. Self-confidence, self-esteem, and self-worth. It supports our self-confidence, self-esteem, and self-worth by reminding us that we are magnificent spiritual beings here being human and prepares us to deliver our unique message to the world and fulfill our mission as a human being. Pretty much what I'm doing, like, as a light worker. You could be something different, but... Yeah. I don't really need to explain that. You, you'll know. Physical aspects. It governs the lower limbs, the hips, the skeleton, and the anus, and also the penis in men. Women's sexual organs are governed by the sacral chakra, the chakra of, of the emotions, and therefore most women find sex most satisfying in the t context of a loving, nurturing relationship. Men whose sexual equipment is governed by the root may see sex as a matter of survival. However, sexuality and sensuality for both men and women are governed by the sacral chakra. And after I do all the videos for... See, I have a problem with my throat because of my, uh, my anxiety and trauma and, yeah. And I'll tell more about that, but I want to make sure that I can do all this before my phone runs out of memory. Um, so after I do all of these, um, I do have a sacral chakra too, which we will go into that. And as it goes on, like I will get each chakra that keeps going up to keep doing these for everybody. So yeah, sex is different for men and women. Sex for women is like a loving, like, Oh my god, spiritual sex is the best, though. Like, when you feel connected and, like, you feel like they, like, took a piece of your soul. They can't literally take a piece of your soul with them, but, like, when you feel like they took a piece of your soul by having sex with them, like, it's incredible. Like, it's amazing. It's... I cannot even describe what it feels like to have that happen to you, but it's fucking amazing. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Like, it's on a whole nother level. But women... If you're anything like I am, don't get addicted to the sex. Like, because it's, it's different with men. Like, like it says, like, they're from the root. We're from the emotions. So, our emotions go into sex. Like, guys would be like, oh, why can't I have a one night stand? And I'm like, because I don't want to get, like, addicted to, like, wanting to have sex with you and, like, get all, like, hot and bothered and, like, want you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Women, you know this, like, if you have somebody, at least for me, if I have good sex with somebody, like, I'm gonna want to keep having sex with them, and, like, that's usually how I always found my next boyfriend, like, I kind of, like, was considered, you know, like, a whore, I'm not a whore, but, like, you know, I had my shit, I did my shit, I did my fair shit in my, back in my day, and whatever, but, like, I was kind of, like, finding who I enjoyed having sex with, a lot, like, and that's how, like, I would find out who I wanted to date, so I use sex as that kind of, um, men use it as survival, it's a whole different, kind of like their self-esteem, confidence, um, you know, it's a whole different type of thing, so hopefully I still have time, all right, and if things go wrong, once we know the functions of any chakra, it is easy to work out what might befall us later if it is blocked, weak, or underdeveloped. Also, a thing that I do to balance out your chakras, if you can picture all your chakras spinning, like spinning, like if you can look up stuff on how your chakra looks, like all of them, like up the spinal gland, and then the third eye and your root chakra, like 
if you can picture that in your head and picture all the balls spinning, it helps a lot. Like, it, I don't know how, but it does. So if you want to develop your root chakra, think of a red ball spinning, like, where your root chakra is, like, down, like, here. Like, the dog's in the way. You can look it up. It's easy. So, depression and poor inner security. Um, it could also be your inner child, too, which I can, I'll tell you more about that, too. Um, contentment and robust health, either physically, emotionally, or spiritually, often elude us in poor self-confidence, low self-esteem, and self-worth, with feelings of insecurity, lack of belonging, isolation, lead us to suffer depression. Um, yeah, you know, like, if you don't fit in, you are awkward, people think you're weird, like, it can ruin your self-confidence and self-esteem, but it's like, embrace that like that's your uniqueness like that's your authenticity like that's what you need that's what you bring to the table that nobody else does so you need to find that like in yourself like your self-worth like it's a big thing like people think I'm weird and it's like yeah I am weird but like the weird people are like the not saying that like only weird people are like good people but like that's what like makes everybody unique, like, everybody has something about them that makes them unique and weird, but it's, like, it's a good thing, like, they bring something to the table that somebody else doesn't, and that's why we're abundant, like, every single person is different, like, every single person does something differently, you can relate to somebody, and you can resonate with somebody that likes the same things that you like, and does the same things you do, but neither one of you are gonna be exactly the same, like, you can tell somebody an issue that you had or an experience that you had and they can like understand you know why you felt like that but they will never experience the emotions that you literally had with that experience like it's abundant like everybody's different it's infinite it's ongoing like it's limitless it's endless infinite like whatever so yeah this can do with your inner child too which i i can help you try to nurture your inner child and stuff, which helps a lot with your root chakra. So, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, ambulance about survival. Depression and isolation result in ambulance about living, and we may tend to opt out. We may do this temporarily by disassoci disassociating emotionally and psychologically, absenting ourselves from the present, or by changing our reality by using alcohol, drugs, gambling, sex, food, etc., um, you know, overdoing things, uh, addiction, um, being excessive with these things. Um, sometimes we may want to leave permanently and suicide becomes an option. Okay, so with this, I literally recently did this. Um, I disassoci disassociated myself from reality. I cut everybody out of my life. Like, I deleted Facebook. I deleted Messenger. Like, I just didn't want to be bothered by anybody. And it was the craziest thing. I also have a situation of why I did that, but still, like, I did that. And, like, when I, as I was growing up, um, you know, I'll talk about more about this and a different one about trauma. But, like, when you grow up in chaos, you attract to chaos. So, it's like the abnormal becomes normal. You know what I mean? So, um, disassociating emotionally. If you can consider yourself numb like, nothing bothers you, like, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, but it's, like, a big thing to happen, and you're just like, yeah, fuck it, like, whatever, like, you're numb, like, you're numb to your emotions, like, you are so, so into chaos, and you're so, and you don't even mean to be, I don't mean it in a bad way, but, like, you attract chaos, because that's what you're used to, like, I did the same thing, I literally did, like, up until, you know, not too long ago, um, but I even knew all this stuff, and I still let chaos in my life, like, abnormal becomes normal, like, things that people would be like, what the fuck, you're just like, yeah, like, okay, like, it doesn't phase you anymore, like, you're just like, unthinkable, like, yeah, so, addictions and eating disorders, Temporary escapes via drugs, alcohol, sex, relationships, gambling, work, caffeine, sugar, binging, 
um, starving or taking care of others so we can avoid ourselves lead us to the risk of addiction and eating disorders. I have a tendency as I was, I'm a light worker, so like I tend to do this anyways, but I always put everybody before myself. I always want to take care of everybody before myself. I put their needs before myself. You know, it's kind of like an addiction, like with, I just don't want to take care of myself. Like I want to take care of everybody else, but it's also like a light working humanitarian thing. Like, so it's kind of irrelevant, but at the same time, I'm trying to just give you an example of like what that means in that sense um, of the part where it says taking care of others so we can avoid ourselves. Um, cynicism and negativity, chronic lack of contentment and joy lead to cynicism and negativity, which further isolate us in increasing our sense of rejection as we spiral down into a state of permanent disappointment with life. So, you're so negative that you just, you know, permanent, permanent disappointment with life. That's like the main thing there. Sense of rejection spiral down into a state of permanent disappointment, you, chronic lack, like you just, you have no con, um, contentment with joy, which leads to just negativity. So, people pleasing, Fear, rejection, or criticism make us desperate for approval. We therefore try to please everyone, becoming irrationally obsessed, wow, obsessed I can't even say it, O-B-S-E-Q-U-I-O-U-S, obsessed I can't say it, I know the word, I just can't say it, um, humility, humiliating ourselves by lack, alright, I'm gonna start over, people-pleasing, Fear, rejection, or criticism make us desperate for approval. We therefore try to please everyone, becoming irrationally obsequious, humiliating ourselves by lacking the courage to say what we think and feel and add to our self-loathing. That's a huge problem that I had. I let everybody walk all over me, and I lost my root chakra, and now I have problems with my throat, and I can't swallow anything because, like, your root chakra is, like, your speech. Like, you're speaking your mind, and I... Never did, and I let so much shit happen to me, and I never told people how they made me feel. I never said the things that I wanted to say. Like, I'll tell you more about that, but, like, that's also your throat chakra. Like, you need to speak how you feel to people. You can't let people hurt you and you not stand up for yourself, okay? Black and white thinking. Oh, man, this is totally my shit. We are unable to integrate the truth that those we love have faults and those we may not like still have good points. Thus, we idealize some and dem demon Wow! <laughs> Sorry, guys. Thus, we... I, I, wow, this sucks. Thus, we idealize... Wow, idealize. I idolize some and demonize... I, I don't know why I can't do it. Look. Where is it? It's not really. It's kind of blurry. Dem demonize? I'm sorry. Thus we ideally... Why can't I say this? Idealies? <laughs> Ideal is. Thus we idealize... <laughs> I can't say it. <laughs> oh my god. Thus we... I D E A L I Z E. Some, I'm thinking idolize, right? Some in de demonize. I don't know why I can't say it. I'm sorry. I'm not an idiot either. D E M O N I Z E. Others. I know what they say to me. I just can't say the words. This way of thinking may affect not only our relationships, but also our opinions and judgments in every area of our lives. I'm just going to say something. I was in an 11-year relationship with my son's father. He's an extremist. He's an addict. Um, and I always said there's no gray area with him. Like, if he was going to do something, it was either going to be black or white, and it was never white. Like, literally, it was never white. It was already always black. But there was no in-between. You know what I mean? Like, there's no gray area. It's either black or white. Like, there's no in-between. Like, you can't look at both sides from, like, good and bad and, like, look at the positive and the negative. Like, it's either good or bad. Nothing in between. Okay. 
poor judgment or risk taking behavior. Willingness to take risks is a laudable characteristic, but here we flirt with disaster, angrily teasing, uh, test 